18th, 2000. Okay, this is uh, November 18th, uh, 2023, and I have to use my phone, <laughs> so so this is weird for me. But um, so Maria, we were talking to Jackie about um about the difference, you know, about the difference between the U.S. and um. Philippines, and you must have heard her talk about not leaving your kids. Tell us, I mean, do, do you mm -hmm. feel the same? <clears throat> um, yeah, I think it's it's a whole thing in the Philippines that we just can really leave our kids. I mean, like I was teaching high school in the Philippines, seventh, eighth, and ninth, and I'm also teaching the same grade levels here. Mm -hmm. And so, like, um, but well, she's absolutely right because, like, we have to you know, watch our kids most of the time, even though there are cameras in the classroom, we still have to watch our kids because like what you, just, just just like what you mentioned before or even at the beginning when I came here, we have to like, we have to look over those kids or else like we'll be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, you will get in trouble if you if you if you leave them alone. And you know, when I'm there, so Maria, I do the bathroom, I watch her kids. But um, but anyway, so Jackie, you have somebody that you can you can ask though immediately that's close by. Jackie left. <laughs> anyway, okay. So um Maria, is there yes, Doc. Hello, Doc. Oh, yeah. yeah, Jackie. What yeah. um I have yeah. another uh, fifth grade teacher can look over from my uh, class if okay. ever I need to go to the restroom. And I have also my um, para. They will be help, helping, yes. That's 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 awesome that you have one. You have a para professional 100% of the time? Yes, I have. But they will not be staying in the room for that long period of time. They will be coming for like one hour in my morning and for um like 40 minutes in the afternoon. So I guess you'll just have to make sure that you go you go whenever the power is there. <laughs> yes, I need to ask permission because you know I have twenty five and twenty three students. Wow. So Maria, that's the difference too. Maria is in a small school, and Maria, I think your your highest number is what nineteen students. Mm hmm. That's my highest. Okay, students. Hey, tell them about our visit to other school, Maria. We we, we, so we wanna... Okay. Um, so we're like um, visited another school is for city junior high school it's just a junior high school there and we went to the eighth to an eighth grade class and i was so shocked no we were all so shocked when we visited there like the the teacher in one classroom she has a big class and there, there were like 46 kids 46 eighth graders and it's a mix of like honors classes or the pre-ap and then the regular kids, and then the sped kids, and then like um, she has a, she has another person in her classroom because it's a really big, you know, class size. And then like Miss Miss Allen told us to like count our blessings because like my biggest um class size is just nineteen, and that school they have a big class size. Every everybody everybody's got that that many, so forty something. To me, that's mm -hmm. a lot. So you better be good. You better be very good at her classroom management. So were they um, having issues at all? And then what happened was I was very curious about are these kids really that good? So tell them about this Filipino Bernadette. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, there's a Filipino there. Um, and she's the only Filipino in the building. Just kind of like a. I, got, I, I don't know, maybe that's why she was just feeling like, like, she's not feeling well or like, how do I say this? Because like, she, that same set of students, like they were acting so good with this certain teacher that we visited. But then when um, this Filipina had these kids um, last week, like she cried because of this kid. Like she was, she was even saying like, like she was, she wanted to like resign or like you know move or leave, but then like when you get the salary, of course you decide again like oh we're we're gonna postpone the leaving again something like that. So like the salary is a good motivation too. Yeah, but that's really that's a, that um that it is the the, the teachers classroom the, the children same children would have under different teachers because the teacher is very good at. You know, she had very good at discipline. She had been there, what, 20 plus, right? 
Yeah. And she's so been the, teaching for like 23 years, and but in that school, she's like five years. And yeah, you know, that's but obviously she has her control, you know, under under her belt. You know, she don't she she does not put up with like you know any noise at all. They were over there paying attention, like you could not hear a pin drop. She, they were listening to her, although her her pace was so fast. You know, nobody ever like question or whatever. Like in some classroom, somebody would have said, hey, you're so fast or, you know, can you slow down? You know, they would have said something, but they didn't with that teacher. But of course they were doing a test prep. So they're preparing for the big test. So they were being shown strategies on how to do well on the test. So they did take it seriously. And so, so what was your takeaway on that, in that trip, Maria? Do you mind sharing with them? Okay, so I also handle eighth grade, and that was really a big class. Mm -hmm. And I had the same like set of students as well in my classroom, but it's not just like in a big class. They were like separate classes. Oh, just like what you told us, like count your blessings and then like, um, you know, be grateful for having a small class size because like you can really, you know, do a lot. Like, yeah, you can do a lot with your kids and also like you can really see who's struggling mm -hmm. in your set of kids and you can like accommodate them like in whatever um in whatever ways you can do because like i think the the downside of having a big class is that like you don't know if all of them are learning in the yeah. classroom you know and then most most students who participate in the discussion are just i think those are only the smart students so like there could be like students that are just like what are we doing now or like but or what is this about but they just they just don't say it you know right passive listeners yeah so because um you know you do in in the surface you do it it does look like everybody was on task and so on but but you you know you really did not get to know who's got it and who didn't i tried to go around the ones that were around me they seemed to be doing okay they were using a frayer frayer model which is a four square voc vocabulary and they had it in a in a digital template so the kids knew it really well so Maria, remind me, I need to, to, to email that teacher to ask for the template if you're still interested in using it. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So anyway, okay. So any anything else that you want to share, Maria? Tell, tell, us, tell them about your plans for Thanksgiving. So yes, yeah, since in the U.S. We, we get like the Thanksgiving break. So I'm planning to go to different state parts in Arkansas, like visit also Miss Ellen in Salem. And then, like, you know, have a Thanksgiving dinner. So, like, I think other teachers here that are already in the U.S. also have their own plans as well. Because this is the only time. Like, you can see posts in Facebook that, like, why we're we always, like, traveling or going somewhere else. And it's probably because, like, the work here is so tiring. And then, like, you, like, it's immensely tiring. But you, des and you really deserve the break. And, and you have to cherish the breaks that you get. Because, like, that. That is a blessing. So that's just how yeah. I see it for now. Yeah, you need a you need a break for sure. You know, for mental kind of more mental health. You know, for your for your mental health. Um. Anyway, talking about school. Um. Jackie said to please uh, share more, more classroom management things, um, and, and all this, and it has to mean something to you. And then they so they wrote about their pet rock, and then I brought some colors, and they were actually coloring the pet rock. They were drawing on it, and so on. So they ended up with an art, <laughs> with an art of a rock, but they also were writing on it. They're observing it because of science. So I kind of did an integration of um, art art and um, science and literacy and ELA because um, because just because they were outside doesn't mean they're just gonna be sitting there, you know? And so whoever was done, they were, they got to like lay down, just look at the you know, trees and so on. They just kind of relaxed, but they had, were done with whatever they were doing, but they were all fun, fun work for them. They didn't mind, you know, they didn't mind it. But so they wanted to earn more outside things, but you know, I didn't give it as a, as a, as a free time at all. I, I just made it an activity that's more, more fun for them, you know? So we got to go outside. But anyway, you come up with some creative ways to to um, reward your kids. Um, like my biggest one, I, I'm sure I've, I remembered me sharing this, that I always had a, um, I, um, what did I call it? Um, 
where we eat in the classroom Friday, something Friday. I don't remember what they name it. But anyway, um, so the, the parents or grandparents were invited to come every Friday. They can come and they can bring lunch for the kids, whatever they just need to. Um, they just need to go let let us know in the morning so that the 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 um cafeteria will not will not prepare too much food, and so uh, they will come and they would actually be in my classroom for an hour and they would watch the videos that we have done all week long. I had a camera going all week long, so anything that we did, like when when we our role play on when we did our story or we did our science you know they were asking we were doing meteorology stuff you know they were predicting the weather all the things that they were doing in the classroom they were making commercial this that it's like a presentation time they were actually showing that we were actually showing the parents you know what they did all week through the video and then so if you were not behaving yourselves and you do not earn that coming to you know to to us uh, the classroom Friday, you get to go to the um, study hall where, where they have somebody that would, you know, people that get in trouble, they have a teacher there that's watching them and they get to eat their lunch there and it's no fun for them. So, you know, um, needless to say, I didn't have any behavior problems because the parents already know that, oh, I don't get to come Friday because you're not going to be there because you were in trouble. You know, and so anyway, a lot of times I would also be telling the parents, like, you know what, I'm sorry, but, you know, your son did this or your daughter did this. Maybe we'll try again next week and whatever, because they they, they don't want to not come. You know, it's a very small community. And the video that I was showing them is also going to be put on TV because we own the cable company. So in the basement, <laughs> Dwayne had it set up where I would just put the video in and then the whole community, the whole community. sees the whole video. So, so they're like stars of the, you know, of the community. They know that it's Miss Miss McCullough's class. I was in channel 99. Uh, Dwayne put, put a the whole channel just for me. So I was channel 99. But um, but anyway, so anything like that you take advantage of. I happen to be a, the wife of a you know cable cable uh, operator. So I took advantage of that and use that in my classroom. But you have other things that you you know you have connection with, like you know, it, it, kids love to know about the Philippines, for example. You can use that too, like okay, if you do this, then I'll share three things about the Philippines with you. You know, I would bring them like money from the Philippines, and I'll you know I would show them this, and, and I would buy some you know some um, fruits that are tropical fruits that they could not get normally. I would buy it, and I would we would eat it. You know, papaya, for example, the sweet papaya, they really like that. And so one day I'm like, okay, the next time that you do this, you will spe spell papaya. Once you've spelled papaya, then I will bring papayas to you and then we will, um, I'll, I'll let you taste it, what it is. And of course, we already researched what papaya is and so on. They got to already kind of know what that is. But anyway, and some of them would want to do cooking, like we spell the word cooking and we cook like um, crab rangoon ones I, I think that's a favorite kids always you know those I don't know if you know what crab rangoon is but that's like a little you know those little square uh, wonton thing and you put the cream cheese on top and you season it and you just close it like a dumpling and you fry it and I just brought my little rice um, my little uh, my little uh, fryer and we cook it and so they were having it for snacks and sometimes popcorn would be good you spell popcorn and they get popcorn and popcorn is pretty cheap. So we had the popcorn popper, you know, you can buy those popcorn popper and those popcorn is really cheap. When I taught high school, eighth and 11th grade, for some reason, they were really crazy about that. And then I had, I even bought my Keurig for my 11th graders, eighth graders, and, and they got to earn like little bit of tea or little tea thing. I don't, I didn't want, I, th I think maybe I asked the principal if coffee is okay, but then I went for tea and hot chocolate. So I was actually putting it through my Keurig and they just thought that was such a big, you know, a big deal that they got to, to get some Keurig things for me. <laughs> but I went and yeah, I didn't want to get the individual Keurig because that gets expensive. So what I did was I got the little, the little, um, you know, um, um, converter thing where you can put the regular coffee in it instead of the little um, individualized uh, coffee. So that way you can buy the big deal of coffee and it's only five bucks instead of like you know 35 cents per cup per, per little individualized cup that they have so things like that where you can save money but then you know your kids and you know what they're into if you live in a which i bet you do in an area with really high poverty lots of really poor kids food is always a hit with them 
because you might have kids that you notice if you're in the class in the live in the cafeteria watching them these are the same kids that were like eating really fast and eating like a lot and all that because they may not have much food at home you know and and they try to eat a lot when they are in school because they don't know when their next food will be and you have kids like that in america believe it or not we have kids like that so so um I've also done it where I had uh, food on Fridays that I could give them that they could take home with them. You know, um, later on, like even now I'm retired, I'm involved with um, church where we are actually giving them 10 different types of food in a Ziploc bag and they take them home. We have identified more than a hundred families. And then so each kid in that family will get something every Friday and we delivered it to the uh, guidance counselor. So the guidance counselor was giving it to the teacher and the teacher gives it to them without showing to the other kids, you know, it's kind of being very um, nonchalant about it and kind of more of a secret thing because you don't want the other kids to make fun of them or whatever, especially in high school. That's like a big, a big deal to them you know, to be stigmatized. I don't want people to know that I'm poor. I don't want people to know that I'm this, you know? So you just have to be aware of that, that since it, you know, being sensitive about that. Yeah, so so uh, Jackie, did you did you get anything from all the things we shared between Maria and I? She, she uh, said- yes. yes, Doc. Actually, our students are so lucky because our school gave them the free lunch and free oh. breakfast. So actually when I went there, uh, uh, some of the kids really have to throw some of the foods. And I told my students, you're so lucky because, you know, my students in the Philippines, they have, um, they cannot eat that much just like you. So you are not supposed to throw your food. You mm -hmm. have to keep it because you're so lucky. You have free breakfast, you have free lunch. And mm -hmm. then... And as I said, um, I think it's for the uh, new information that I've got from the both of you. And then my last question is that if ever um, there are like two or three of my students who will not do that one, will misbehave, even though I'm doing this uh, particular classroom management. So I guess that's the time that I'm going to um, call parents. Call parents. Them, yep, right or yeah. Yeah, do just the call the principal. Yeah, that I always did in my classroom. I always kind of give them a warning. Like I would, if I put their names, you know, if I have a name on the board area, but at that, at that time it was okay. It might not be okay now. But I have a little box there in my board that I put the names of people. That's kind of warning, verbal warning. And they do that. And once I put a check mark on it, that means, um, you know, um, we better watch out because second check mark, I'm calling your parents. So it's kind of like having that little, you know, so, you know, you watch out, you know, your, your names are in the board, watch out you know, and all this, and I leave it all week. So they cannot just like start over every week, or every day. They come to my room and they start over. No, you already have one this, yesterday. So you, you know, so they have two more chances that week, but then uh, the parents will be called. But some, some, of course, it depends upon you. Some of the teachers were actually starting it every day, especially if their discipline was not very strong. They, the kids misbehave a lot in their classroom. So they start over every day. See, my, my, my discipline was a little stronger. So I did it all week long. It, it lasted all week long. So because I, I use that to decide on the Friday luncheon, that's what I call it, the Friday luncheon. So if you have those two check marks and I called your parents, you cannot come to the Friday luncheon. So they really work on not getting the second check mark <laughs> because they want to be there for the Friday luncheon. Yeah. So anyway, but I came up with that, you know, and they have like, they also earn things like, um, you know, those little ticket, those little ticket from Walmart that you you get whenever you go in a ball game and they give you this little ticket that's like different colors. I use those and 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 we call them like, um, we just call them tickets, you know, and then at the end of the month, they we would have an auction using their tickets. So they represent, and, and in my sister's classroom, they didn't use tickets. They would use like a, she calls it Trotter box because her last name is Trotter. So Trotter box. So every time she's got a, a picture of, of her face in the money, you know, and that's called Trotter box. And then they have like envelopes and they put their money in the envelope. And at the end of the month or at the end of the week, whenever you do it, a month would be better, is to have an auction. You you display the things that you want to give away and sell and, and you kind of have an auction there. Okay, how many, you know, how much would you give me this? 10 I want to give 15 and so on and so they the one with the most money will end up with the most things you know and so anyway they love that because they know at the end of the month we're going to have our auction 
So, yeah. And so when we start writing checks, you know, one third grade, we, we learn how to write checks. So then I wrote them a check and they have to write me a check to for rent and all those things. You know, their seat could be for rent. You know, they want the seat like in the back because they don't want to be in the front. Then that might be, you know, worth two bucks. You know, write me, write me a check for two bucks <laughs> for that, you know, whatever. But you, you started with so much money in your checking account. You know, everybody starts at, you know, at 20 bucks for the, you know, for the week. And so you're going to budget that for whatever you're writing the check for but they got to practice writing checks so they got to they got to actually apply what they they've learned because then when they give me a check i also check make sure that they get it right you know are they spelling the numbers right they're putting this you know in the right spot and are they signing it and you know all that are they dating it so i so i would actually be you know applying what they've learned in math you know, so things, so you, you've got different things. And the other thing that really worked for me as an elementary teacher was my station, my learning station, that I have learning stations there. Since I was a chess coach, one of the station was my chess station. So they actually could play chess and they have to put a sticky note there on who they're against. And the rule is they cannot touch that piece. If they're going to touch that piece, we're going to have to take a picture of it. That way they can put it back later. But um, but they cannot touch that if there's some bit, but it's playing with that. So I have two or three different, you know, so six people could actually play. But then another station will be science where you have your pet, you know, your pets, whatever, and they name it, and they take care of it. And then another one is my, uh, they call it a publishing, publishing station where they could write poems, they could write stories, and they would do um, raps. And, and um, because I have an author's chair, they would always ask me, like, can I be in the author's chair? I want to present what I wrote in the publishing center, you know. So, so you know, your ELA kind of combination thing. So we were always like that. We were always like performing and people have to pay attention. They were multitasking. They may be doing something, but but because I have these kids all day. So they got to, you know, they get to really know each other and they know that, you know, if you publish something, if you did something, you can always share, just ask, because even though the other kids might be doing something, they still have to be multitasking and be paying attention while at the same time still doing their work, you know? So, so the classroom is always very organic, you know, there's always uh, things that are going on, but they're learning the whole time, you know? So it's almost like a family really, yeah. So that, that family feel, that, that big community learning feel, you know, from having a class president that organ that have the 10 minutes, um, you know, a class meeting in the morning by my by my rug, by my carpet. And they will actually talk about their, you know, that their local, their family, and then what's going on in Salem and then what's going on in the world. They talk about that while I'm doing my lunch count and my and my attendance. You know, to try to get ready for the day, my president of the classroom plus the vice president are actually doing that for the first 10 minutes. So they got to have their bonding there. As a, of course, I have to model all that. You know, and they have their little speaking, their speaking stick there that only ha whoever has that stick has the right to talk. <laughs> so they have to pass that on. <laughs> yeah, but anyhow, and so because they have um, they have that going on, it's almost like a self-governing, -go you know, classroom. And that, that helped to help a lot elementary, you know, high school. I don't think I was able to do a lot of those things in high school just because the period is so fast. You know what? The only thing I did the high school was um, I had this little board with a, with a, like I had six sections and I have a you have a, um, a person that took the role every day for me, you know, that they just write their name that was absent. And I'll just like look at that, how many names and then plus how many are here and make sure the number is is right. And then that's very easy, easy way to get the attendance. <laughs> you know, so I don't have to waste time. And then they have to have a, an assistant so that if they're absent, the other assistant could do it. So that's my, what I did in high school. So that was to buy time. But anyway, how about other people? Do you have other things that you want to share with Jackie that might work for her? Giselle, 